Legal advice because there's always small print. We must remind you that the health advice given on this show is general advice and that for any specific condition you must seek the help and guidance of your doctor or a professional medical advisor before commencing any treatment or any kind of dietary regime. Welcome to another episode of The Health Show with a panel of experienced practitioners. Hi, I'm Leary Amond, kinesiologist. Hi, I'm Liz Nagel, naturopath and thermographer. I'm Jeremy Kenton, an osteopath. Kate Mars, yoga teacher. And I'm Juliet Nosk, I'm a yoga teacher and a life coach. And today we're talking about digestive health and how to look after your diet and look after yourself in that respect. And we all know about this classic phrase of you are what you eat. So what are your feelings on this? Are we what we eat? Are we the product of what we eat? Well, I think we certainly know, don't we, when we've eaten something healthy and we feel great afterwards and our bodies feel great afterwards. And we know very much when we've eaten something that's not good for us because we usually get bloating and a dis heaviness, discomfort. So, yeah, I think, I think we know. I don't know. <laughs> it's, well, maybe not instantly. I think people think that they love sugary, heavy uh, foods and gluten and all of that. And it's not until they um, eliminate it from their diets for about three weeks, at least three weeks. Um, and then when they go back, well, first of all, they eliminate it for three weeks and they think, oh, wow, I feel great. Mm. I've, you know, I haven't felt this good since I was a kid. And, um, and then if they eat a little bit of wheat or, or, um, or sugar or something, they know instantly, shouldn't have done that. It's quite often combining, isn't it, as well? Like if you have a donut, you've got the wheat and then you've got the sugar in it, uh, or a croissant. It's got the butter, the dairy, and um, the wheat in it. And I think it's quite often if you've eaten something where you have a small intolerance, because quite often when you don't feel well, it's because you've got maybe a mild intolerance to the food that you're eating. So we're not talking just allergies. You know, people have peanut allergies and other allergies to food, you know, you've got um, celiacs that have very serious allergies to, to certain mm. foods, but an intolerance might um, flag up in a very small way. So there's a in difference. Small discomforts, there's a big difference. Difference yeah. between food intolerance and, and a true allergy. Yeah, Absolutely. there's very few true allergies. Very few right. people have a true allergy, really, if you, if you do the testing. Right. You know, the percentage is tiny. Do any of us have any? I mean, is there any way that you can test? Well, with kinesiology, it's perfect for testing um, because you're muscle testing, so you can put individual foods on the patient's body and see if there's a resistance in the muscles. Um, when you place that food on the body, the body will be aware of the content, can you show? the organic content. So it can be well, done that will, quickly? We're going to do that, yes. Oh, Let's yeah. see now. Yeah, I'm going to take Juliet off and um, do uh, a diagnostic test for you. Is that okay with you, Juliet? Sounds good. Yeah, should we go? Right. Yeah. Come with me into studio two. Sounds very interesting. So Juliet, come through into the treatment room. Thank you for joining us. We're going to demonstrate to the audience. If you'd just like to sit down on the couch for me and lie down on your back facing the ceiling. And we're just going to demonstrate to the uh, audience out there uh, how we do a in, uh, kinesiology diagnostic test for food intolerance Should and rebalancing. My, my cardigan on. Yeah, but the good thing about kinesiology is you're fully clothed on the bed, you can relax. And all I'm going to be asking you to do is raise your arms over your head and back over the top of your head. Now, do you have any shoulder problems at all? Any articulation issues? No. That's great. So I can do the test from this way if you have no problem. I'll be pulling on the arms and testing the muscles from this direction. If somebody has another problem, I would actually take the arms down, down towards the, um, the feet end and test from that direction. So it's all dependent on, on uh, the shoulder mobility. So I'm just going to be getting a baseline and just seeing what is a muscle resistance with you. And we have a yes, and then we have a no. When I'm getting um, no resistance, the, the muscles are nice and firm and basically both fingers, thumbs come together. It, when I'm asking for a no response, 
one of the muscles will weaken slightly, and usually when I'm using a stress factor. So what I will do is I'll put something on Juliet, and we're going to do a test for wheat. So I have a bag of wheat here, wheat flour. I'm going to put this on Juliet, and we're going to test to see if Juliet has a wheat intolerance. So I'm going to ask the body, and straight away, I don't know if the audience can see both that the left arm muscle has shortened, which is giving us a clear indicator that the body's under stress and that she does have a wheat intolerance. So this is a very easy way to find out whether there are certain foods that you can't eat, and you can do that as well, whether there's vitamins that you're taking, medication that you're taking. Obviously, you still need to follow your doctor's advice, but it is a, a good way of just checking to see what foods are good for you. So I'm just gonna take the milk back off you clear the message that's going on in the body and we get a baseline again of clear so that's nice yes and we're going to find out if you have a lactose intolerance so putting milk on the body and we're going to ask Juliet and that's stressing her body out and as you can see her thumbs are not coming together so she's stressed by the dairy being on her body her muscles are tightening and that will give us a good indication that she has intolerance to dairy, which, Juliet, can you clarify to us whether that's true? Yes. Yeah. That is. And what about with wheat? Yes, as well. That's yeah. great. Thank you very much. So I've got one more here, which is sugar. I'm going to try sugar on you. I know how much you like sugary things, so I'm <laughs> hoping that's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to test again. And that doesn't seem to be a problem. So you can carry on having all those nice <laughs> sweeties. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that's great. So you can get yourself back up again there. So just to, just to recap, with kinesiology, it's not just food intolerances that we've done today um, that you can diagnose for. There's many other things that you can help to find out. Um, it is a holistic diagnosis and treatment. So thank you very much. Obviously with digestion, which we're going to carry on talking about, it's a good way of finding out if you've got food intolerances and you don't want to suffer with bloating or discomfort, then you can find out through a simple kinesiology test. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you very much, Julia. Well, that was really interesting. Fascinating. That How do you feel? Uh, good, yeah. <laughs> it's always relaxing being on a therapy bed, isn't it? Mm. But I think it, what's interesting, Juliet does actually know that she has some food intolerances, but I didn't know when I tested her mm -hmm. that she had food intolerances. So it was interesting to find out that the tests that we were doing were bringing up correct um, don't, don't they sometimes do that with an arm? Yeah, they can. I've seen that, yes. Yeah. Can, yeah, can you show us that? Because that's are. quite yeah. dramatic looking, that test. A minute. So here's our lovely bottle of milk. So what I'll do is just raise your arm for me. I'm going to ask you to resist after okay. three, and I want you to resist, okay? One, two, three, resist. There's a little bit of a wobble there, but now what I want you to do is in the other hand, if you could just hold on to the milk for me and hold it to your tummy. And we're going to do this again. So one, two, three, resist. So I'm um, same sort of pressure going on there, but there was less resistance mm -hmm. when she's holding on to the milk. So yeah. I'm just trying so to get less strength. So there was less strength. And for a cynic yeah. regarding that kind of thing, for me, that's quite a dramatic, that's obvious... That's what we should have done on Jeremy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> put, oh uh, dear. Let's just try again. Yes. So one, two, three, resist. So now she's got a nice, strong resistance. Yeah. Strong. If we've got time at the end of the programme, we'll do it on Jeremy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the cynic. Moving well. on. <laughs> <laughs> But, so, but, but um, allergies aren't the only thing that it can cause digestive upset, sure they're not, okay, they're, like, Yeah, no, I mean, I was in a, um, my experience, the, the best kind of, the best time I felt in my life, for instance, was when I was not, um, well, they call it food combining, which is a bit of a contradiction because it's actually not food combining, so you're not combining your starches or carbohydrates with your proteins and you're eating your fruit completely separate from anything else. Um, because they digest at different um, speeds in the body. Mm. So if you have, for instance, the, the vegetables are going to digest a lot quicker than your starches, and um, the quickest would be the fruit. So, so, so say you've got your spaghetti bolognese, right? You've got your, then you've got carbohydrates and protein. So they're both going to sit in the stomach, and then if you have a fruit salad on top of that, that's just going to sit on top of it. So it's going to take a lot longer. Yeah. It ferments, and it's going to take a lot longer for that to process through your system, which is what's going to make you feel uncomfortable. And, and so you're not going to eliminate 
as much, you know, basically, especially when it comes to, to weight, the more you can eliminate, the, the more, you know, you're kind of, if you're looking to lose weight or whatever. Mm. But that's what you want. You want that quick elimination, you know. So if you have your fruit, it's going to pass through a lot quicker rather than yeah, and you do want sitting in the stomach. Which is causing the bloating because it's gas. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you should take time with what you eat and then and create pauses, presumably, between the, the starter and the main and... Yeah, no, yeah it, and don't I mean, combine. So don't yeah. have fruit, just, you know, don't mm. have fruit with your meal at all if you can. Um, and then maybe have a salad, you know, but avoid the croutons, you know. Or maybe you choose just to do protein, chicken and vegetables, you know, as your main course rather than pasta or bread, you know, that's especially here in Spain. They're always like, have the bread, have the bread. And we, oh, I So there's a lot to be said for the French way of eating where they'll spend hours over a meal. Allowing mm. time to digest, nice chewing the food wine. with a nice bottle of red wine, <laughs> really <important>. <laughs> <laughs> chewing the, the food oh, slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, other, another thing that's good, and I know um, it, it, um, we're sort of t talking about eating fruit separately, but uh, just having a little piece of fresh pineapple about 20 minutes before your meal um, mm. just boosts the enzymes. Mm. Why, why would that be? Because what? there's bromelain in pine, pineapple. Right. And bromelain is, um, if you were to put, for instance, a piece of steak into a bowl of pineapple juice uh, overnight, it would be cooked and maybe half digested. It would, uh, if you left it there for any length of time, the pineapple would actually digest that piece. I think of meat. we should do that test on another show. <laughs> strong really stuff. Yeah. 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 It's very strong stuff. They yeah. also say that uh, different foods use different digestive juices, and that in fact melon um, doesn't really use uh, any digestive juices. It's mostly water, water and sugar. Much. Yeah. So um, to have that completely separate from mm. anything. Yeah. Um, about 20 minutes away. So no parma ham and, and melon, that's a no-no. Yeah. And, melon on its and what you said about the French and the way that they eat, it's really interesting because um, they, as well, a really good thing is not to eat when you're stressed. So for example, a lot of people nowadays sit down in front of the TV and watch a movie, a drama or a program, mm, and what news. you find is the body is getting stressed and tensed from the you know, the dramatics of the, of the film, <laughs> or they've had an argument with someone, they sit down to eat, and, you know, we're talking about emotions being stored in the body, then you're eating, as you're eating, you're kind of... Well, well perhaps not even being it's, aware it's, and conscientious yeah. of what you're eating, you're so busy watching the, the programme, you're just eating and but you, you finish your meal and you haven't even paid any attention to whether, what you've eaten and when or how you've eaten it. Yeah, and I think <laughs> it's really important to be aware of, you know, your meal and take each mouthful and, vacuum and it chew. Up. Apparently they say, don't they, you're supposed to chew, masticate several times yes. before you swollow. Most people will pop it in their mouths and swallow the mouthful mm. without mm. even masticating. And the other thing I is, of course, so. the posture that they're in mm. slumped in front of mm. the television. But then you You've also got people literally eating on the hoof, charging yes. from one yeah, office yeah, meeting yeah. to another with a sandwich in their hand that they shouldn't be having anyway. Sitting at the desk. Yeah. Mm. And high energy foods, sugar foods, you know, instant sugar foods and sugary drinks, sugar chocolate bars, you know, those quick foods because people are tired. What can I have? Quick, I'll eat a chocolate bar, have a fizzy drink, maybe I'll have another coffee to keep them going. And really, if they can learn to find slow release energy foods, that are more healthy, mm -hmm. like a, a like quinoa porridge, porridge in the morning, yeah. will keep them going all morning. Mm. Um, or a good, an apple, which is fibre. Yeah, uh, pack a good lunch, you know, yeah. you can do a nice quinoa or rice salad or something that's healthy for lunch. Add lots of yummy bits into it. I mean, you know, you do lovely lunches, don't you? I've, I've, I've eaten your nice salad. <laughs> I feel like I haven't yeah. done a nice lunch in You've got nuts in yeah. and raisins. Yeah, those, and that, was, that was when I... I wasn't think. working all day. <laughs> ah, you <laughs> work. Okay. I can't remember that. When was that? But yeah, yeah when I would be <laughs> done at work. two or three, yeah. 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 But this is what I talk a lot about with clients is the planning, because I have a lot of clients that I work with who sit and eat at their desk, and they, you know, a lot of it is the guilt of what people will think of them if they actually take half an hour, an hour off mm. work. Mm -hmm. uh, the guilt of not being able to complete all your work, which one client's realised she'll never be able to complete it all, because there's always more to do right. um, and, and what it is it comes down to that planning so I'll make a big kind of vat massive pot of soup and even freeze some and then put it in the fridge and you've got one for every day and then I help clients doing that as well you know planning their breakfast mm. their lunch their dinner and it, you'll be surprised it saves time in the supermarket 
Yes. You know, it's just so much. Makes it, life so yeah. much easier. It causes a lot of problems, doesn't it, to the digestive system if you don't eat properly. You mm. know, a lot of people I, end up getting constipated because they're people, uh, eating the wrong food at the wrong mm. time, not drinking enough fluid. What was I, your suggestion? I give suggestion? people a, a, a diet. It's called an anti. Well, it's called the dysbiosis diet, which basically is um, about feeding the proper flora in, in the gut and just getting that uh, whole gut moving properly. Um, and, the, the, and should we just briefly say what flora are? They're natural flora occurring natural. bacteria which are there to help with the digestive process. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, so, um, so it's, it's, a, it's a diet actually that was developed by our friend uh, Dr. Harold Geyer. Um, and um, he, he developed this diet and there's a list on one side that says, you know, don't eat this, this and this, or avoid. And then um, on the other side it has all the things that you can substitute. So it would be wheat-free, sugar-free, dairy-free. Um, but not, and, and a lot of uh, what I call the kind of British Isles fruits, like uh, apples, pears, oranges, you know, all the normal fruits that, mm. that don't, that, that, and, and grapes as well. Anything that you can make alcohol from, you should really avoid because they do ferment very okay. quickly. That um, rules out your red wine theory then. <laughs> but you talked about constipation. Yes. And bowel motion is, it's not just a matter of what, how you take stuff in, well, but it's people, how you get rid yeah, of things some as well. Some people are stressed and, and, you know, have irritable bowel syndrome, and other people have constipation. I think Juliet's going to give us an example of. Um, uh, uh, how to best posture yourself when you need to go to the <laughs> There's also, like, I mean, she is going to do that, but there is also, like, and it does mention it in the book, actually, when she talks about roof or diet, is around... Um, the raw food is actually, well, it's kind of what you're saying, is like you can have a stool in your bathroom and bring your feet up like this so that you're not, so you're in a more natural but position. But basically, we as modern people tend to use toilets wrongly. I mean, yes. you've got the German and the Austrian approach where they've got a shelf that they will evacuate the bowel motion onto and then they turn around and have a good look at it. Which makes sense, you should look, you should see the colour, the smell, the consistency, the shape, the size. It's the same thing wriggling around. Anything <laughs> wriggling around. This has suddenly become the horror show. Not the horror show. So let's see this demonstration. Well first, um, just to share what it is, basically it's a yoga p p pose called the garland pose and a garland, you know, we might know is like something that you put around your neck. And so when I actually researched this pose, what, um, what I found out was it's not actually the garland pose. <laughs> um, so the name in Sanskrit, which is um, a language from India, is actually mala. Um, so there's two malas, there's the mala with AA, um, a -L -M -A -L -A, and there's Marla with M double A L A double A sorry and uh, so one of them means garland which is obviously maybe what they chose for the respectable English public that, that nice postural name mm -hmm. um, but the other name actually means excrement right so uh, this pose um, will help relieve constipation and it is uh, the best way basically um, to sit yourself on the toilet. They say that the western toilet was actually made for six pe sick people who couldn't actually um, squat down. Too overweight um, and obese back yeah. in the day when they'd gorge themselves. Yes. And, and this is to say that the pose you're going to show us is not how we, we're recommending people sit and go to the bathroom now but in preparation of going to the bathroom perhaps yeah they could be practicing this yoga pose because it naturally helps the body prepare yeah obviously if you visit asia you might need to practice this pose because oh, yes. there are very a lot of hole in the floor <laughs> and when you go to a festival they will help don't you they? <laughs> Uh, yeah, they'll help. <laughs> if you're camping, it will help. Camping, yeah. So yeah, so mm. basically the the garland pose, and um, I'm going to show you that now. Oh, right. An interesting approach. Yes, we're going to watch her through the window in Studio Three. <laughs> She's going to squat. <laughs> Hello, okay, so I will give you a demonstration of the pose now. So you want to have your feet about hip width apart, bring the palms of your hands together, and then you're gonna slowly lower your bottom down, bringing the bottom down as low as possible, and bringing the elbows in between each of the knees, and lifting the chest, pushing the palms together, 
and uh, just relaxing in that posture really and staying there for as many breaths as you can. One of the things that you want to make sure, if I turn around this way, is that uh, you're not crunching over and that you're lifting the chest and lengthening the spine as long as possible so that the back is nice and straight and the shoulders are relaxed and uh, back. So lifting the chest. So this is uh, garland pose as it has been called and uh, yeah try this out at home. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Wow. Very cool. Thank you very Julia. much, Juliet. That was very yes, interesting. Yes, lovely, lovely. I can get my children so, practicing that. Yeah, one. going back to you know what I was saying about the stool. If you can't squat down like that, or you don't, you know, you can use a stool yeah. to elevate your feet yes. so that your bum is in that yeah, position. Yeah, it's that position know? because actually that sitting, lifting, isn't it? yeah, because sitting on the toilet as we do and straining actually is a massive cause of uh, hemorrhoids, mm -hmm. which is what yes. a lot of people suffer yeah. from. And gravity helps, and if Absolutely. you're in the right posture, the right position, that yeah. will people help. People need to think about lubrication, don't they? Of, 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 <laughs> well, I mean, fluid, fluid Tell intake. Tell us more. Oh, you yeah. mean if they're not taking yeah, enough, fluid, not taking in enough fluid in water? Yeah, if they're not taking enough fluid. True. And if, if the bowel isn't lubricated well enough, and I understand that linseed mm. actually creates like a lubricating gel to help the, the faeces sort of go through the... Yeah, it's also wow. the, the fibre as well. So we have the psyllium husk here as well, <laughs> okay. as well as the linseed. So it's partly um, the gel, but it, it kind of... The, the fibre basically goes through and kind of takes everything uh, with it. They call um, it like a sweeping brush for the digestive Yes, yes. yeah. Because the colon, remember, will be absorbing all the fluid, so this is performing almost like a protective coating, yeah. is it? Yeah, I think that's, from what I understood, that's what happens. Because when you put this in water, they, it creates like a, a sort of a gel effect around yeah. the sea, doesn't it? Is that the chia, I think, that you're no. thinking? Oh, and the linseed as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you soak it over So if you put that on your, on your breakfast gel. cereal, like a spoonful of it in the morning, uh, every day, then that's sometimes it's better to grind it. But yeah, you need, we to, you need to grind it um, daily, fresh. You need to have it freshly ground. Not, not, oh, really? Yeah, really. It's it's I just because it, put it on as it is. Does that matter? No, no. It's it's good. But you you do especially you need to drink an awful lot of water, especially with psyllium um, husks, because it turns to like wallpaper paste. Yeah, yeah. Right. very very quickly, and it will do with the heat of your body and the, the body absorbing the water, uh, the moisture from it. You need to drink you know at least a pint. So a lot of people think a that they're drinking of a lot of... Yeah. Sorry, to, um, sorry. Right, right, uh, read over you. <laughs> just looking at the reading there. Um, <laughs> no, but a lot of people think that they're taking a lot of fluid, but it might just be coffee and tea all day, and that's not mm. the fluid, that, the healthy fluid that you need in order for the body to work properly. You need to take about a litre and a half of water, I think, a day, don't you? Well, the, the yeah. recommended fluid intake shouldn't be more than three litres because you can actually cause damage because it then, you then go through a dehydration process that affects neurological tissue, it affects brain tissue, and you can get confusion states and things. So depending on your level of activity, if you're running around a lot, or if you're running a marathon, or if you're on a or bike, then you'll need it. But mm. for normal life, three litres of fluid is yes. the recommended, no more, and certainly no less. And the easy way you can tell is by the colour of your urine. Yeah. If it's a strong yes. colour. Listening to your body is very yeah. important as well, because if you're having lots of fruits and melons or, or cucumber or it's foods with water, water, you're not having any coffee, then your intake's going to be a lot more. Whereas if you're having lots of coffee and no fruits and vegetables yes, and fried it's food... going to have an effect. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So as we've wound this up in the way that things end as they go through your digestive system <laughs> in terms of bowel motions and bladder function, that's the end of today's health show. Fantastic. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. See you soon.